First, thank you everyone for joining our kind of EDRF goes virtual session. Uh, we're sad to miss you all this year, um, but just due to some of the recent rise of Omicron variant, we felt it was our responsibility to postpone um, our participation in an effort to protect the health and safety of our employees, partners, and customers. Um, so we went virtual, and yesterday we had a great session where our SVP of sales, Gene Bradley, as well as our VP of sales, Mike Kerkuba, was able to tell you all a little bit about what's going on with Tel-Aid in 2022 and, and where our focus areas are. If you missed that, we have that recorded and we'll be happy to share that out with everyone. Um, for those who don't know me, my name is Beth Bergman. I'm the Senior Vice President of Solution Strategy and Brand Experience at Tel-Aid. And I'm really excited today to bring you some of our most innovative technology partners. Today, we're gonna to have some conversations that we are hoping to have at NRF from some of our core partners today. Cleveron, we'll hear from Milas Anton, Deep North, Rohan Sandhill, Yodi, Grant Troxler, and Nuaz, Samantha Aggie. Before we dive into those, just quickly, a little bit about Tele. Uh, we are over 40 years in business. We serve 26 of the top retailers, and uh, really we're focused on retail, grocery, quick serve restaurants, the logistics and distribution areas, finance and healthcare. Uh, we're a data run company and at the end of the day, we're a technology integrator. What we do for our clients is really helping them accelerate, and you might've heard that with NRF, but we, we said it here first, your technology adoption. And we do that through a variety of services, um, everything from helping you design and engineer your technology needs to the actual management and deployment with our on-site on and field resources. And then afterwards, we can help manage and support those technologies. We have a 24 by 7, 365 help desk. We have capabilities to monitor, maintain, and, and break fix all of your technologies, whether they're inside or outside your four walls. We have a full depot repair, as well as a asset management through our warehouse facility, which includes staging, configuration, and kitting. Um, so if you wanna hear a little bit more about Tel-Aid, I, I encourage you to turn it, tune into the webinar from yesterday. And without further ado, let's get some dive in details with our partners here. Uh, Milis, Anton from Cleveron, I'd, I'd like to give you the, the screen share and let's let our listeners learn a little bit more about Cleveron. Thank you, Beth, for the kind um, invitation. And let's see. And uh, first, greetings to everyone here in the States and also wherever in the world you are looking at uh, this webinar. Um, first, a few words about Cleveron, who we are. Uh, we are in last mile solutions innovation company and we automate the last mile to the really last feet of, uh, of the operations for retailers, for logistics companies, and everyone who needs to really move something, a parcel, a package from one place to another and how hand over it uh, to the consumers. Uh, we are active worldwide and here in the States, uh, we are working together with a great partner in Telaid who really helps us to set the stage and uh, really set up the technology here in the States. A few of the customers globally well-known names with whom we are working on, on various projects uh, in the automation world. Um, so why are we doing this? Uh, our customers are really telling us and uh, have shown in the last years that automation of uh, retail is not a nice to have feature it's a must have feature and in order to really stay in the competition and uh, have a cost efficient operation you need to automate it and especially the last few years have shown that uh, this is mandatory what Cleveron brings to the table is a wide portfolio of technologies, starting from lockers up to really, really large uh, retail automation solutions where 
uh, we're able to handle thousands of packages in one location and hand them over in a fast and quick way. This brings us really to the increased satisfaction uh, which all the consumers currently are looking for. Everybody wants to have it quick and easy uh, to get their goods quickly, uh, be it groceries, be it clothing, be it sports goods, whatever they are purchasing online, they want to have it in a really quick way. And that's where Cleveron technology comes in to do the uh, BOPIS pickup and handover uh, for the customers. We enable it 24 seven, depending on the location. And really uh, your business is in business uh, constantly. And the customers can have the interaction with, um, uh, with a retailer or the logistics company. Uh, really simple, uh, simple first wins have been that uh, uh, instead of waiting in a queue uh, to pick up something, uh, at a retail location, people just go in, scan in their code and are off to their way. So that's what we are enabling. This brings us also to another tricky point. Uh, everybody is looking out for costs and uh, we help to reduce them. So the store associates can really put their main focus uh, into serving the customer, not doing uh, these uh, mundane or uh, activities which can be automated. So instead of uh, uh, going to the back room and then looking for this order or, or a certain product, uh, the handover of the purchased goods uh, in an automated way, the customer does all the work in, in a good sense. And uh, our customers have really put their focus of their store associates into serving the customer, doing additional sales, doing consulting and uh, doing what they are there uh, for in the stores in the first place. Another part is the store uh, <coughs> uh, space uh, efficiency. Uh, as we know that each square foot is of really, really high value in the retail domain. And then we come in into really spending uh, spending the least amount of uh, footprint and maximizing the revenue which you can get out of this. Um, another really, really important topic which has popped up now during, again, the last few years, but it was in the making uh, uh, even before 2020 uh, is the handling of returns. Uh, it's really crucial to have this kind of mechanics uh, working uh, in a smooth way and, again, cost-efficient way. A good example is the uh, good partner in the UK with whom we are working in Asta. And then we have automated both their uh, store pickup and returns uh, flow. And the returns flow, especially after the holiday season, uh, Everyone's reading currently the spikes of uh, uh, items being returned and, uh, and most probably everyone has had their own experience also uh, with the returns. So uh, when we can help retailers automate this, I think we're bringing a lot of value to the table, uh, both from time saving and also cost saving side. Here are a few examples uh, just to bring out uh, some good ideas where you can bring the automation to the next level and provide 24 seven services. Here are some global examples here. You can uh, have your cakes or pastries uh, accessible whenever you want, not when the cafe is open. You can have 24 seven access to your uh, hardware store, uh, get your uh, components, uh, uh, screwdrivers, whichever components you need uh, during the off hours. Uh, one, one case which has been here in the States actively uh, automated is the uh, DIY shop. So this is, again, 
happening globally and that will be able to help really bring this 24 7 service uh, to the DYI retailers. Another good example uh, is libraries. Uh, yeah, and everybody's reading uh, books electronically, but still there is a niche for this kind of service and uh, it has been taking up uh, really well. And uh, the agricultural sector, uh, these people really need to have 24 seven access to their goods and spare parts. So this is again, really easy to automate uh, through the technologies which we are providing. Uh, there are three key components we are clever on and bases uh, the solutions on. One is hardware, the second pillar is software, and third part is uh, services in order to bring this whole orchestration together. And uh, that's why we have been partnering with Telate here in the States to really have all these strong pillars together for the customers and bring uh, the automation solutions uh, to them, which they are requiring and which they are needing. So this uh, sums shortly up uh, what Cleveron is all about. Uh, reach out to the Telate colleagues or me through, for example, LinkedIn, and we can have an deep dive into the technologies and how we can help to automate your retail or logistics business. Thank you so much. Thank you, Milas. I appreciate that. And, and to your point, if any of our listeners that are tuned in today want to learn a little bit more, uh, we've got a demo unit in our one of our corporate facilities, but could also spearhead helping you go and demo the product at some of the other US locations that have rolled out Clever on Units. So just reach out. Um, we're going to pass it over to Grant now to talk a little bit about Yoti and what that team over there is doing. Um, just as a quick FYI, I forgot to mention this earlier, please put any questions you might have in the chat. We'll have a little time at the end to address those. So with that, Grant, it's all yours. Thank you, Beth. Uh, just checking if you can see my screen and it's come up all right. Yep. Perfect. Um, again, thank you, Beth and Telaid, for giving us the opportunity to give you a brief presentation. Um, my name is Grant Troxler. I'm the commercial director for Yoti here in the USA. Um, Yoti is a, a global identity platform. Um, our solutions provide users a safe way to prove their identity, um, their age and credentials online and in person. You can see in the box at the bottom of the screen, uh, those are our core products. Uh, obviously the Yoti Digital Identity, which is our free downloadable app on the right side. And then we have two B2B identity verification services. We have an age verification and age estimation solution, an e-signatures product and authentication solutions. So retailers, retailers can leverage Yoti online, in-store, and upon delivery to minimize friction for customers and staff. Age estimation and, and verification can be provided at point of sale, self-checkout, scan and go, online, and within a retail company's mobile app. A customer can identify um, uh, can be identified and, and linked to loyalty cards or memberships and IDs can be verified through institutions like money services and when purchasing drugs from pharmacies or collecting uh, prescriptions. Um, and then obviously we can also verify IDs and age um, through delivery services. Yoti can also provide additional security functions such as multi-factor logins, uh, and we also have a slick password manager. Staff and suppliers can be verified for recruitment screening. We also have access control solutions through identity verification. And our e-signature solution has ability to link the biometrics of an individual to a digital signing. There are obviously many challenges for retailers, as all of you know, uh, selling age-restricted goods. 
we have just listed a few here. Um, obviously, what Yoti wants to do is mitigate those risks. Um, so there are glaring problems with weak online age checks and, and some of these that we have identified, but we really want to work with you to mitigate these work uh, risks and work with your regulators state by state to, to implement the best solutions. Yoti offers a complete suite of retail age verification products. Our Yoti mobile app can provide an age plus um, credential. So a, a user with a Yoti app can scan a QR code at self-checkout machines to share an age above attribute. So in the US, they can share that they above 21 or a retailer can set a threshold aligned to their compliance and regulations to a higher age. We also have age check cards, which are designed to be used at convenience stores, for example, where users can scan a Yoti QR code and show their age on the app to the store assistant. And then we have Yoti age scan, where our AI powered mechanisms quickly estimate um, the age based on a user photo. And to note, this does not require the Yoti app to estimate the age at checkouts. Three of our solutions are ideal for eliminating unnecessary age interventions and automating this clearance. Um, the Yoti digital app is reusable, allowing customers to share the verified age matched to a physical ID. Uh, we have an integrated identity verification solution um, where the relying party will receive just the date of date of birth from a verified ID document matched to the user's biometrics. And then our age estimation solution has world leading accuracy where our algorithm estimates the age in a matter of seconds by just capturing the image of the face. So age estimation literally is a quick scan of a user's face into a webcam um, where, where we use facial analysis, not facial recognition, recognition of an estimate uh, user's age. Um, this is instant and anonymous. Um, it's highly scalable and there's no pre-registration um, needed or ID document required. Um, passive lies with this detection ensures that the user is real and we are really flexible with our API to embed into your, your website, app or terminal. There are some links that you can use to try out our demos and we have a white paper on our age estimation solution. This chart just depicts um, Yoti's facial estimation um, solution and it's built in accordance with uh, privacy by design principles aligned to GDPR and it's based on the Fitzpatrick scale um, of an individual's skin tone that derives a, a mean absolute error. So you'll see in the bottom right-hand corner, at this stage, we are continuously testing and increasing or bettering this average or this mean absolute error, and it's down to 2.19 years. So it's pretty accurate. Obviously in times of this pandemic, uh, times of uh, COVID and, and, and if needed in the future, We've trained and tested over 100,000 facial images with face masks. So this is not a problem at conferences, on site, in shops. Um, we continue to perform this very well with an accuracy of 3.8 years as a mean average error, um, which is slightly higher than the 2.19 years without masks. Our identity verification is a simple scan of an ID document. Uh, the user can show a passport, driver's license of all 50 states and state IDs on a camera device. Um, this is a simple user flow that I'll explain to you in the next slide. Um, biometric liveness and face matching incur, and we support over well, thousands of ID documents from over 190 countries and territories. And again, this is, this, this is 
seamlessly done to integrate into your business. We can fully embed into your, your website or, or mobile app. I mentioned the flow. So what it will entail is essentially two or four checks and two steps. The first step is data extraction and an authenticity check. We use a combination of OCR technology to extract, extract the data off your ID document, the front and the back. And then we also have NFC chip reading capabilities to extract that data out of your passport. We also do authenticity checks, um, a, a hybrid approach, automatic and when needed, we can apply a manual process. And then we can also um, uh, match this data or, or request this data from um, other credit references or agencies such as AMBER. The second step would be a biometric scanning, which is the, the liveness test. And we, um, we actually match the, the face of that document or that individual that scanned to the, to the document that they provided. And lastly, we have the Yoti app that you can verify your age with. So this is a reusable identity app, as I mentioned, um, where you'll have an age token embedded into your, into your app, an over or under age aligned with your policy. And again, you know, this is a free downloadable app to any consumer. Um, details are sharded and stored separately. So you as the owner or user of the app only have access to this key. Nothing in the database in the OT allows you to reconstruct a user ID. Um, we'll give a, a receipt of proof of age to the relying party and there's a full audit trail that is impossible for fraud disputes. Um, and as I said, this card is a tokenization that sits in your digital wallet. Quick little slide on some of our partners um, that you can see here in the US and across the world. Um, our age estimation solution, we've done over 550 million age checks for our partners to date. And this is increasing substantially you know, every month. Um, and to finish off, obviously the main thing that we want to do is help retailers in this, in this sector. 50% of staff interventions are due to age restricted uh, items in a basket. Age check checks are often unnecessary. I've experienced it. If you over 30 or over 40, you, you clearly older than 21 in the US. So Yoti wants to help you ensure that these valid ID checks are done online and in store and to, and to help you within this, this age bracket. We want to help with a better customer experience um, with anonymous and frictionless age verification and to have quicker transaction times, uh, which will equal more revenue and, and throughput for you. We'll help with to reduce staff interventions, increase their efficiency. And again, in contactless times, COVID times, we want to help with these uh, remote and contact, contactless ID checks. And lastly, we want to provide you with that audit trail or log of these IDs checks that are in place. Please reach out to me also. My name's Grant Troxler. Uh, my colleague June is um, listed here on the slide. Please reach out to me also on LinkedIn or on my email, grant.troxler at yoti.com. And there's also a link to our anonymous age estimation solution here at the bottom of the screen that you can have some fun and play around with, with your age. Thank you very much, Grant. I appreciate that informative presentation. So unfortunately, Deep North was not able to join us today. So that means Samantha at New Oz is going to be our closing partner presentation. So Samantha, turn it over to you. Great, thank you very much, Beth. Um, I'm from NUAZ, and we are very excited to be partnering with TelAid. It's a new relationship, so it's great. Um, I'm going to share my screen. So hopefully you can see my screen now. Great. So NUAZ, we offer wire-free access. And what we have seen in the market 
is that there is a huge amount of uptake in IoT devices. And when I say a device, I'm talking about any piece of hardware in the store. It could be an HVAC system. It could be um, refrigeration in a grocery store. It could be um, forklifts. It could be anything that's in the store. And what we're seeing is this incredible uptake of IoT in stores. And we expect this growth to continue by 30% each year for every year ongoing. So, and I think most people view this trend in a really positive light. And we also view it in a positive light, but I think that there are some common myths. Is my screen flipping? We can see your screen. It's just not in the uh, full screen. If you wanna try sharing again. Oh, sure. Okay, sorry about that. And so what we have seen is that there are some common myths that are developing. And the first one is, I think that most OT professionals, and by OT professionals, I mean people who are managing HVACs who are doing the operations of the store, they think that the IT department should put all of this equipment onto their corporate network. But what we know about that is it's incredibly high risk and there have been multiple hacks that have come through third-party vendors on the network. I think a lot of people have the perception that this new IoT technology is really easy to manage in the stores. Well, actually, on a day-to-day -day basis, it can be easy, but it can also create huge problems. So the best example is, you know, you put your lights on a timer and then the people in the store never have to think about it again, except they have their whole staff in at four o'clock in the morning to do an inventory and nobody can turn the lights on. So this can be really frustrating for the store staff. A lot of people believe, okay, I've got IoT, I'll stick a modem on it and I'm good to go and I'm gonna have efficiency and sustainability. But what we've learned is all of this IoT requires orchestration and it's not an easy thing to just set and forget. And finally, a lot of people think, okay, well, I'm just gonna focus on a single vendor and they can solve my communication for all of my IoT. But what we're seeing is that the number of things that are IoT available is increasing. So you might say, okay, I'm gonna use my HVAC provider and I'm gonna take some losses by having them manage my refrigeration, but it'll be worth it because they can handle all this IoT uh, orchestration for me. But do you want them to hire to handle your forklifts? Do you want them to hire your fire suppression systems? This is gonna to continue to grow. And so a one vendor solution is probably not the long-term answer. And so what we're seeing, mainly from the fact that people think this is going to be easy, that companies and retailers in particular are not developing a strategy to work with their IoT technology. And we see what most companies are doing is a little bit of everything. You know, they might say, okay, well, this thing I'm not going to have access to. I'm going to put some of my vendors onto the corporate network because they're, they're you know, they're... Um, grandfathered in, but new vendors I can't work with, or it's going to take a long time. And the result of this is it's a really frustrating kludge for stores to deal with. And so this is a really simplified model of what it looks like. Most retailers don't have one HVAC provider. They have five. We've seen as many as 18. And so they have clouds for each of their individual HVACs. Same thing for refrigeration, same thing for lighting. Um, trash compactors often have a modem attached to them so that you can have just-in-time garbage pickup, but then you're paying for two modem lines, and this is continuing to grow. So sometimes when I give this presentation, companies say to me, is it really such a big deal? It's a kludge, but we're, you know, we can, we're just barely getting by. And what I would say is, yeah, it's a really big deal because first of all, you're not getting the true value of your IoT investment. And second of all, the number of IT, IoT devices is going to increase by 30% every year going forward. So the longer you wait to orchestrate this stuff, the harder it's going to be. And so some of the, some of the um, repercussions of this system is, okay, I'm going to have limited access. So maybe I have vendors grandfathered onto the system, but I don't allow two-way communication. So what happens is when an HVAC repair company wants to go to repair your HVAC, they can't, 
they can't look into the system because there's no two-way communication. And so they have to roll a truck to find out what's wrong. And then they have to, once they get there, they don't have the part that they need. So they have to roll a second truck. And so these costs add up really, really quickly. And so you might think to yourself, okay, well, I'm just gonna give them full access, but the cyber risk is absolutely astronomical. And we know from lots of attacks from third party vendors that the, the costs of these attacks can be devastating, particularly from retailers. And so some companies say, okay, I'm just gonna have, I'm gonna let my vendors do this. I'm gonna go vendor by vendor and let them solve this problem for me. And the problem with that is first of all, you end up with vendor lock because it doesn't matter if somebody else can do it in a less expensive way or they can do it more efficiently. You can't switch vendors because you have no way to manage the access. And the second problem with this is over time, you're going to need to collect data on all of this equipment. And what we know is that data needs to be correlated. So for example, a lot of people have done huge LED projects, which is fantastic. Um, and you record your ROI off of that. But maybe your ROI is overstated because when you add LED lights, you also have heating costs go up. You know, maybe that's not built in. And so if you're not correlating your data, it's going to be inaccurate and not as good as it could be. And finally, you have a lot of employee frustration because they're spending way too much time troubleshooting this stuff. And so that brings in NUAS, and we have developed this service to um, solve this problem. We sit between IT and OT. Um, we can help with managing all of your vendors. Basically what we are is an enablement tool. We're an enablement for all of the projects that you wanna do in a very quick period of time. And so what we do is we build an operations technology network. It is 100% separate from all of your other uh, business activities. So your customer records and data is all completely secure. And it is built 100% to the benefit of operations. So we can do things very quickly in the time that operations wants to do it. And so this is what it looks like. We build a cloud in our data center and you can host all of your EMS or energy management software in that cloud. And we control all of the user access and user management. And I think most companies are really underestimating how many um, users there are. So in one customer that has about 500 sites, they have 3000 users. So it really is a huge time saving to have them all get onto one cloud to go to the access that they need to go to. It makes their lives a lot easier. And so it's a non-disruptive, easy installation. Um, we partner with Telaid, which is a great partner and can make this happen really well for customers. Um, we have an enclosure that has your, uh, your telephony equipment in it and security equipment. Sometimes an antenna is used on the roof, but this can be rolled out um, in as little as 60 days to hundreds or even thousands of sites. You can see what we see. And so because this is an overarching view and it is a name tool for all of your vendors, you can see every device in your network and you can see what's up and down. So you can start your day with a global view instead of having to go from energy management system to energy management system. We have uh, seven layers of security built into this. I'm not gonna go into all of them, but the first layer of security is that it's a completely separate network. It's an air gapped network. So your records are completely secure from this technology. And then we have all of the standard levels of security built into it. One thing I want to emphasize about this is that um, the services are managed. And so we are updating all of the software. It gives you a chance to run legacy equipment in a secure environment separate from your records. And so security is a huge piece of this solution. So finally, NUAS Wire Free Access is a real game changer. It gives you the chance to access all of your building controls remotely, so that can save you a lot of time. You don't have to travel to them. You can stay 100% secure and compliant. Uh, we, don't, we follow, of course, standard security protocols, but we don't build the security policy for you. The corporation tells us what security policy they want to have, and we implement it. It gives you the opportunity to make better and faster 
decisions based on data. And one thing I'll say about that is we've talked to companies who have done large scale analytic programs and it's taken them two years to be able to coordinate data. In companies that we have the system set up, we can get them to their data in two or three weeks. So it really changes the time to data. Um, you can monitor in one window all of your devices. And why this matters, it seems like such a simple thing, but it, it really affects so many different pieces of your business. First of all, cybersecurity and reputation. If you lose customer data, you're going to take a huge hit to your reputation. Um, if you have cybersecurity holes, you are damaging both your wallet and your reputation. Business operations, not being able to turn your lights on is a really frustrating experience and it can prevent you from opening the store. It's really urgent to make sure that your business operations are flowing smoothly. It has a huge impact on your cost of maintenance. We know that if you can give vendors access to the data and their sites, they can do more and more and more things remotely. And that is gonna save a lot of money over time. This is really important for sustainability because sustainability requires evidence or proof that you are making these changes and you're going to need data analytics to do that. And so this is a path to getting all of the data from your buildings in a simple way that you 100% own. So you won't have to be buying back your data to prove your sustainability goals. And finally, em employee morale. You know, these problems tend to crop up in like early morning or late evening when nobody is in the corporate office to help the store solve these problems. And it's incredibly frustrating to be in at four o'clock in the morning and not be able to turn on the lights. Um, employees feel like, hey, I used to be able to use a light switch. What was wrong with that? So this has huge implications across every area of your business. And it's a pretty simple solution once you move towards it and it will take a lot of stress off of what's happening. So that's the end of my presentation. Thank you very much. You can reach me um, through our website and also through Beth and Telaid, and I'm excited to answer any questions. Thanks, Samantha. I know Telaid is really excited about just the relationship and the possibilities for our clients. So thank you for deep diving into that. So that is the end of our, I'm trying to just get the, there we go. That is the end of our partner presentations for today. Um, if anybody has any questions, we are all happy to stay around for a little bit longer. Encourage you to use the question um, and answer chat box at the at the bottom. But thank you, Milas. Thank you, Samantha, and thank you, Grant. Thank you, Beth. Thank you, Beth, for having us. Thank you very much. Just going to check the Q&A. It looks like there's no open questions right now. Um, but like I said, please reach out to Telaid. We can help facilitate any conversations between any of these partners or to find out more on what we do and how we do it. Oh, looks like a question did come in. And Milas, I believe this is for um, Cleveron. But how quick and easy is it to typically get these parcel kiosks picked up by consumers using them and, and actively wanting to use them? Yeah, that's a good question. Thanks, Malou, for, for this one. When it comes to uh, take up of uh, kiosks or uh, parcel lockers, then it really, the key point there is uh, informing uh, by the logistics company or the retailer the informing of the consumers about this uh, capability because uh, it's not helping when it's hidden somewhere or when it's not uh, choosable uh, for example uh, in the online uh, purchase systems so that is uh, that is really really crucial part that everybody knows that this kind of functionality and capability is existing and from there on it's uh, much easier to really build up the knowledge. And the second part is the ease of uh, sharing uh, the pickup codes, for example, that this needs to be also performed in an easy way, either through SMS or app or whatever uh, consumer facing technology 
uh, the retailer is working on or, or you are um, using, that is uh, the channel uh, which should be used for uh, communicating with uh, end consumers. Thanks, Milos. Um, another question, this looks like it's for Nuaz. What's involved with the initial setup process with Nuaz? Uh, how, how long on average does it take? I know you said maybe 60 days for multiple sites, but maybe boil it down to one site? Sure, we can do a site very quickly. What we see is there's quite a bit of variation. It depends on how large the site is and how much wiring there is to do. Um, but we can, we have rolled out as many as four or 500 sites in 60 days. Um, it can be a lot of times when we start with a new customer, they start with one specific project. Maybe they're having trouble getting refrigeration online. But if you do, if you take a little bit of time and you analyze the building and you go through and you figure out how many modems or forms of communication are attached, you can do everything at once and save a lot of money. And hopefully, um, depending on how many cellular charges you have, you could possibly even do it for free. Um, so I would say between 60 and 90 days, depending on how complicated the install is. Great, and not to let uh, Grant for left out, we've got one for Yodi here. Are your customers driving the consumer adoption of the Yodi app or is it the other way around? That's, a, yeah, it's, that's another great question. I mean, obviously there's initial reluctance or hesitation from clients to make their customers adopt the app because um, you know not everybody might have it in certain areas but that's why we really offer three different options and i highlighted giving them the the yoti app option which is free um, to any user and then we give them two other options so there's an age estimation option that you can use very easily for, or implement very easily for people, you know, over 30 years old, set that threshold and do the age estimation. If that doesn't work, then there's another fallback to use somebody's identity document to verify their age. So we really, in terms of the integration and, and the options we give, we don't wanna tell them what to use. We wanna give them three options. That's why we give them the app, the age estimation, which is instant, and the ID verification, which literally can take under a minute, a minute and a half, depending on the user's ability to, to go through the check. Great, thank you. And I think that's the end of our question. So again, thank you, Nuaz. Thank you, Cleveron. Thank you, Yoti. Appreciate everyone's time. Appreciate uh, everyone who tuned in today. And I hope everyone has a wonderful day. Everyone take care. Bye.